Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at Movie Armaments Group in Toronto, Canada, where we are taking a look at a Vietnam era M16A1 with an M203 grenade launcher on it. Now a little while back we did a video on the predecessor to this grenade launcher, the XM148. If you haven't seen that you should go take a look, because the 148 is what really led to the development of this grenade launcher, which turned out to be very successful. So there were some problems with the previous version, it was too complex, uh, it had stuff hanging out all over the place that got stuck in brush, and it just wasn't convenient. And despite having more than what, almost 25,000 of them manufactured, or I'm sorry, almost 28,000 of them manufactured, the government after some testing in Vietnam decided, nope, this isn't going to work, scrap it all, and rather quickly instituted a replacement program to come up with something better. That program was called GLAD, the Grenade Launcher uh, Attachment Development Program. And that was in 1967, and uh, there were seven different grenade launchers that were proposed to the government as a result of that, or during that project. Three of them received development contracts. Those were uh, AAI, which developed this, uh, a Philco and in cooperation with the Ford Motor Company, which developed actually a side opening grenade launcher, and the Aerojet Company, and I don't really have any details about theirs. But after some development work, AAI's was de deemed to be the best, and uh, actually put into production. And this all went pretty quickly. By the middle of 1968, AAI had been approved, uh, they'd been given a contract to, to start production, uh, the gun actually received its designation, M203, in November of 68, and by 69 these things were in production. Now this replaced the one XM148, which had been developed and produced by Colt. And by the way, Colt actually offered to, uh, to provide a, a, an improved version of the XM148, what they called the CGL5, uh, for free to the government. And the government turned it down. That's how fundamental some of the problems with that Colt grenade launcher were. And so AAI had, had competed in that original contract as well, and here they are actually winning the contract in 1968. So good for AAI. The problem was AAI didn't have the manufacturing capacity to make these in the quantities that the Army needed. So AAI made the original, like the original 600 for field testing, Thing was approved, they got a contract to make them, and they made a small number. This is actually an AAI one, which is quite rare, but ultimately the major production contract went to Colt, because Colt had the production capability to do it. So despite being unable to develop a grenade launcher that would pass muster itself, Colt ended up getting the contract to make all of these. So by 1986 they would have produced more than a quarter million of them. Uh, and they would go on to be used until I think 2008, when they were finally phased out in favor of HK's uh, uh, what is it M320 grenade launcher. Anyway, uh, before I ramble off too far on that track, let's take a look at how this thing actually works. Actually, before we get there, I do want to point out this is a really cool rifle. This is actually a Harrington and Richardson uh, M16, H&R marking on the receiver, uh, and it is an M16A1 US government property. Now the M203 here is actually an original AAI production unit, which is pretty cool, because they didn't make very many before Colt took over the project. So i um, got all our markings there, 40mm, 203, serial number. This white stamp is a Springfield Armory stamp, presumably uh, put on there when the grenade launcher was adapted or was mated up to the rifle. Now in practical use here, the 203 solved a lot of the issues that the XM148 had suffered from. So for one thing, it cocks automatically when you close it, so there's no separate cocking lever. The safety is easier to deal with. You just flip that back and it becomes very obvious when you go to try and fire that the safety is engaged. Flip it forward to disengage it. Uh, opening the, uh, the lever here, or opening the barrel here, is a much simpler lever than the, the like, uh, pivoting grip handle of the 148. So you just push that lever in, and the action slides open. You can then take your munition, this is a dummy grenade, naturally, slide it in there, lock this to the rear, it cocks automatically, as I said, pull the trigger, and it fires. Uh, after you've fired, pop this, 
the case is held by an ejector here, sorry, an extractor right there, there's an ejector pin that pops the empty case out as soon as you open the, the barrel. Uh, it is fast and easy to use, it's better than, definitely better than the 148. Now of course this whole system was intended to be a replacement for the M79, which was just a standalone grenade launcher. The idea was to incorporate uh, your grenade launching capability onto a, an actual rifle, so that your grenadier wasn't running around without an actual point target weapon. One of the elements that they really liked on the M79 was its leaf type sight, so that was added back on to the M79. This actually was issued with two separate sights. It had this leaf sight, uh, which goes out to 250 meters, and it was also issued with what was called the quadrant sight. By the way this is an early one, they later would make this into a little plastic uh, slider button that's a bit larger. At any rate, uh, this guy has a flip open aperture, see that there, and front post, and then you can pull this spring loaded catch back and rotate it to whatever range you would like in 25 meter increments, out to 400. Now because of the, the peep sight and post arrangement, this is a more precise sight than the leaf that's over the barrel. It is however a slower sight to use, and it is potentially going to snag on things. Now it solves a lot of that problem by being foldable, so this can all compress in, and uh, pretty much mates up, you know, doesn't extend past the side of the gun. Um, in practice, uh, the guys who were really using these on a regular basis found that they didn't really need either sight. Uh, once you've got the thing zeroed, or once you've practiced with it uh, sufficiently, these were typically uh, fired instinctively rather than using the sights. There were a number of different types of ammunition issued with this, uh, high explosive, there was an armor piercing round, but that didn't see much practical service use. Uh, there was a buckshot round that was developed which also wasn't really as, as effective as people might have liked it to be. The most, most common round was the standard HE. So as with all things, the M203 is a bit of a trade-off. Of course it makes your rifle about three pounds heavier, hanging this thing under the muzzle. Uh, it does not quite have the practical range or, or quite as much muzzle velocity as the M79 standalone grenade launcher. However, with an M79 of course you never have, you, you aren't carrying a rifle at the same time, or if you are you're, you're carrying an extra like six or eight pounds of gear. Uh, having a 203 allows you to combine both weapons into one platform, which I think is generally the, well certainly for the US military this would be the preferable option, because this would stay in service uh, for several decades. As I said before this is of course a, a dummy empty shell, but this is the, the same configuration as you would have for a standard 40 millimeter grenade. Uh, these had a, a specced out on paper, a lethal burst radius of 5 meters, they have a maximum theoretical range of about 500 meters, but a ma for practical purposes 3 to 350 is about uh, your maximum range. Uh, it, this is the 40 by 46 millimeter. I think it's important to mention that there are two different versions of 40 millimeter grenade in service with the US military. This is the what's called low high. At some point actually we'll talk about the, the technology in this cartridge, because the cartridge itself is interesting and worthy of its own video. There is also a higher pressure, higher velocity version of the 40 millimeter grenade uh, that is used in uh, locked breech, well stronger locked breech guns uh, like the, uh, the automatic grenade launchers, the grenade machine guns. So uh, this is what they would have been using in Vietnam, uh, mostly HE, there were a couple of other rounds, there was a a buckshot round which wasn't as effective as, as people would have liked. Um, there was an armor piercing round which wasn't really all that relevant to Vietnam, but the, uh, the high explosive was the standard go-to munition. So the HK320 that's been adopted today has a number of improvements over this. Uh, instead of the, the barrel sliding forward to open it pivots out from the side, that makes it much easier to load long munitions, things like flares or less lethal munitions. You know, on a sliding one of course it has to open as far as the longest cartridge that you ever plan to shoot in it. So um, the 320 it was supposed to be lighter, it's actually not lighter than this, but it's got better sights, it's, it's overall an improvement. So the uh, M203 grenade launcher had a very long and very successful service life, and uh, it's really the one, one of the very few 
seriously beneficial and successful outcomes of Project SPEW. So a uh, big thanks to Movie Armament Group for giving me a chance to take a look at this one. It's really cool. This is not only an original AAI M203, it's all set up on a Vietnam H&R contract M16. This was actually brought back from Vietnam by a Canadian soldier. Uh, he showed up there as part of the peacekeeping force when the American troops were leaving. And uh, apparently this was given to him by an American soldier uh, who was heading out of theater saying, you know, there's still like a war going on here, you'll, you'll probably want something like this. And as you can see, this one actually didn't see hardly any service use, it's in immaculate condition. Anyway, uh, big thanks to MAG for, uh, for the opportunity, hope you guys enjoyed the video, thanks for watching.